Hey folks, how you doing? We're looking for a replication on the Cavendish experiment here. So we've got our torsional balance with just a piece of wire suspending this metal rod here with two weights on either side. And I've been letting this come to rest over a long period of time and doing just really fine adjustments, trying to get it perfectly still. Um, we're then going to add weights or add, add bowling balls for masses um, near the two ends of the uh, of the rod and try and get that gravitational pull to cause this whole thing to twist. So first thing we need to do is establish our baseline. What kind of motion are we seeing with this thing without the interaction of the, the bowling balls on this? Uh, I've been letting this thing calm down all day and it still isn't, uh, isn't perfectly still but it's really really close. So I'm just going to watch for a little bit and you guys get the benefit of high speed. I'm going to be sitting here bored as heck as I watch as this uh, little laser goes back and forth. So we've got a laser here bouncing off the mirror on the rod and then falling onto the ground right here. So you can sort of see that in the video it looks like. Yep, I think we're okay. Um, and that's just going back and forth a little bit. I've got the meter stick to prov provide a, a point of reference so we can see the, the motion of this without the bowling balls. And then we'll put them in place and see if we can observe some noticeable changes. Hopefully, keep your fingers crossed. All right, so let's, uh, let's see how this thing goes. I can get a clock in the picture too so you can see just how dedicated I am, how much time I'm sitting here watching this little laser go back and forth a few times. I'm going to put some marks on the floor so we have a, um, a baseline uh, mark so we can see any differences there. Well, it looks like we're not quite as steady as I was hoping. We uh, still are seeing some shifting. So it's oscillating back and forth, but it's changing the range over which it's oscillating right now. So I think I better uh, let this one sit for a little while and come back to it first thing tomorrow morning after it's had the whole night to settle down. Hopefully it doesn't get bumped between now and then. And uh, we'll see if we can get some more at that point. Cross your fingers for me. Folks, we're back. Uh, it's the next day, and I've got this thing pretty stable, or at least it has been. Uh, I've been literally tiptoeing around the room to try and avoid you know, moving air as much as possible. So we are looking for such a small amount of force with this. It just has to be so sensitive that even little tiny disturbances can, uh, can disrupt it. I put a little paper down to make the mark easier to see, and it's graph paper, which makes it easier for me to tell when it's moving and when it's not. So I'll give you the benefit of the, uh, the high speed here as I mark the current motion of the, the laser light here as it goes back and forth. Um, and then uh, you know, once we kind of get an idea for the range of motion, hopefully fairly small range of motion, uh, we'll put the bowling balls in place and see how that range changes over time. Boy, I'll tell you one thing that is really frustrating about this experiment is just how sensitive this equipment is. Right before I started the video, I watched this thing go back and forth four times, and it was going over about a distance like this. I didn't do anything except walk over to the, the, cam the computer to turn on the recorder, and uh, now we have at least twice as much oscillation here. So, boy, there's a heck of a lot of variance here. But... Hopefully, uh, we, we have sort of a consistent middle point in here, and we can watch how that middle point in the oscillation changes over time. Back to the high speed for your benefit. I'm going to sit here in real time.
Okay, well, let's call it there. Um, so we do see some swinging back and forth and some variation in, in how far this thing is swinging, but it looks like we're keeping a center that's you know, right around this area. So even though we have oscillation around that point, um, that point is, is pretty consistent. A little bit of uncertainty on that, but um, and we're not going to require too much, un, uh, too much certainty on that number, hopefully, uh, to begin with. So next step, I'm going to tiptoe super carefully, super slowly over to get the bowling balls and place them next to our, uh, our apparatus. And then we're just going to let it run for a while and see what our new center of oscillation is. Um, I'm going to put the bowling balls so that it should cause this bar to twist in this direction, which means we should shift our center from here over in this direction somewhere. So hopefully I can manage to walk 10 feet and place two bowling balls without causing much uncertainty in these results. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just have to see. It appears that we're actually exceeding our previous range. We're very close to it right now. And this is a very sensitive system. Well, let's see what we can do. I think my best course of action here is just to remove myself from the situation entirely and see if we can uh, yeah, get this, this thing to oscillate on its own without interference from me. Uh, and it looks like I've already caused a little disturbance in this and maybe uh, you know, the, the fact that we're seeing this get so far over to the right, that may actually be more of a result of me just moving nearby this thing than uh, those two bowling balls in place. So I'll have to watch what happens over time with this. I'm just going to let this run. You guys get the high speed. Well, it's been about uh, 10 or 12 minutes of me sitting quietly in the corner trying to not to screw anything up, so let's see where we're at with this. I'll uh, give you guys the benefit of the high speed again, and I'll make a few more markings. We'll see where our new center is and how it compares to the old center. Well, clearly my interactions have caused uh, a bigger swing back and forth. But it also looks like our center has shifted. So uh, we'll make some measurements in, in just a minute to, uh, to verify that. But uh, it looks like we, we have, uh, have caused you know, some kind of a shift as a result of including those bowling balls. So let's wait you know, to, to make the final conclusion until we've seen a few more swings back and forth, get a few more trials worth of data on here. But I think we're looking good here. We may actually have one that worked out. Alright, we've got our data set. Let's analyze it next. But first, I'm going to stop this video and save it because holy cow, am I going to be sad if something happens to corrupt this file. Let's do that now. Alright, well, I think everything saved okay, so we should be in the clear. Uh, I want to make some actual measurements on this so we can kind of get some numerical estimates of how much the, uh, the orientation of this thing shifted over time. Uh, so I figured maybe a good way to do that was by uh, measuring angles rather than measuring distances um, or uh, you know, at least trying to get things kind of um, relative to some consistent arc. So uh, I, I wasn't super careful when I made the marks about uh, you know, starting my mark at the same spot where the laser started, which I should have been. 
but uh, you know, I did kind of draw on top of the laser. So I'm just going to put a piece of string down, uh, tape it right underneath the uh, the very center point of that um, um, torsional balance, and then make an arc. And then we can kind of mark from there and, and make some uh, measurements of center point and how that shifted over time. So let's get that uh, you know, that all marked up, and then we'll see where we're at. How much of a change we actually observed on this, but. So far, looks really good. Looks like we actually did observe a change on this, so score. Thank goodness we already made the measurements. My tie brushed against this, and look how much it changed already. So sensitive, oh my gosh. All right, let's finish this thing up. So I've got the, uh, I extended the, the paper a little bit while it was uh, still on the floor, and I have the very bottom uh, of the paper, or the, the very edge of the paper marked right here. That's where the uh, the center of that, um, uh, where the kind of the pivot of that lever was. Uh, so all of these, uh, these marks then, I'm gonna measure an angle uh, relative to this protractor that I have taped in place, and then we'll kind of figure out where the middle of that angle range is. So what, what angle was that um, thing pivoting around? Um, and what we should be able to see then is that we have, you know, a different average angle here than we do here, or, you know, noticeably different for all four trials than for these four trials. Um, so let's just go ahead and measure these and, uh, and we'll see how it comes out. Uh, trial one, let's see, purple. Okay, trial one, it looks like we went from an angle here in purple, that was 114, sorry, 104 degrees to here, which is 89 degrees. So 89 and 114 average between those two would be, um, let's say 107.5, call it 108. Whoops, realized I screwed up on my first measurement. So let's go back. Try that one one more time. So here, I called that one 114 before, but actually that's 104 degrees, not 114. And then this one is, uh, uh, actually that looks like it's right about at 90 degrees. So 104, 90 degrees, the average between those would be uh, 97 degrees, not 108. Okay, and which kind of go through the rest of this uh, in the same fashion. So I won't make you uh, wait through my calculations. I'll give you the high speed again. Okay, so we end up with pretty consistent results for uh, these four. Those were before the two bowling balls were put in place. So almost all right at 96.5, just that one that was off by half a degree. So really nice consistency on that. Let's see what we get for the other four trials. All right, so we get, uh, well, you know, a noticeable difference here. We get uh, about 96 point, uh, maybe six degrees there uh, for an average. And on this one, we're just shy of 95, so maybe 95.8 uh, 95 degrees. Uh, so, you know, not a huge difference, but uh, you may be a degree off. Now, we are looking at extremely small forces. And so this, even though this is a very sensitive instrument, we wouldn't expect to see huge changes. Uh, now, just as far as uh, it was what this looks like, and as far as the, the angle shift, uh, you know, let's take a look at uh, you know what that would look like. Where the centers for each one of these things would lie. So I just do two different colored lines here. One at 96.5 degrees, as close as I can manage, and then the 95, just shy of 95 degrees on this one. And we end up with just this little tiny pivot, but you know, definitely a noticeable, when we're careful enough, a noticeable shift as a result of the gravitational force, not from the earth, not from the moon or the sun, but from two bowling balls. Cavendish experiment, pretty clever. Well done, Cavendish.
Thanks very much, folks. If you learned something from this, by all means, please uh, hit the like button or subscribe or both so you can see uh, future videos. And if you can think of somebody else who might, uh, might be interested, by all means, share this with them as well. Uh, and I'd love to see more people access these videos and, and get to learn from them. Thanks again. Bye-bye.